Hello, and welcome back to C's Listening Room. This one's going to be a bit outside of my wheelhouse. It's going to be a little bit different than what I normally would buy or review. This is Little Sway from Chrissy Cochran. It's a cardboard case here. Not even a case, it's, just, it's a cardboard cover. This is a, another Canadian purchase. She's actually from Windsor. She's based out of Windsor, Ontario. Uh, and this is actually a jazz album, believe it or not. Uh, jazz pop, kind of a crossover album. I would say, essentially, it's a jazz album. And uh, kickoff uh, track is Sleep in the Wild. It's the first song on the album. And that was actually played on one of the now defunct Windsor stations that I used to pick up around here. And first time I heard that song, I'm like, I like this. I, I really like this. This is a sexy song. And so I went to YouTube and I found the entire album on there and listened to it. I'm like, yeah, this is really good. I like this. This is very, this is sexy music. This is very kind of romantic. This is really nice. I, I like, I, I'm a rock guy. I don't know much about jazz. I don't really listen to a lot of jazz. Um, for one thing, it kind of sounds the same to me. I, I can't really tell one jazz singer from another and I can't, it, it all kind of just seems the same, but I, I, you know, you could pretty much say that about any kind of music you don't normally listen to. People that don't listen to a lot of country music will say all country music sounds the same. People that don't listen to heavy metal will say that all heavy metal sounds the same. People that don't listen to uh, punk rock will say all punk rock sounds the same. So I kind of, I guess it's kind of expected that if I don't listen to jazz on a regular basis, I would think that most jazz sounds the same. The other thing with jazz is it, it seems like they're all really old songs with different artists singing them. They're all trying to reinterpret the exact same songs. What I like about this is it's a more, it's a traditional sounding jazz album, but with mostly new material. She is a songwriter and guitarist. And she writes all but one song on here. There is a Gershwin track on here. Uh, the Man I Love, uh, Gershwin wrote that song, but other than that, these are all originals, and that kind of helps its case, I think. Uh, very, just very kind of soft, very subtle, very gentle jazz, jazz pop. Um, they said it's sexy. I, that's, I, I, that's the best way to describe it. This is music that I would listen to on a date. Um, I would I would put this on if you wanted if I wanted to create a romantic atmosphere, or maybe if we were in the car going to a nice dinner, this is the kind of music I would put on or listen to it coming home. Uh, this is music that you would hear like at a jazz bar or a jazz club, or the kind of music that you would hear at a, at a jazz festival. But to me, it's very romantic. It's like date night music. Or this is also the kind of music I could kind of see somebody listening to having coffee on the back deck on a Sunday morning in the springtime with the, the breeze and, you know, the birds chirping and, and all that, you know, wind rustling through the tree branches. And you want some nice, soft jazz music to, to kind of fit that mood. So that's why I, I can kind of see that music, uh, this music being in that that kind of a setting. Uh, this is definitely an indie album. It's on it's on Canada Factor Records. Uh, it's as I said, it's just this cardboard cover, and it's just very simple like that. It does give your basic information: who did what on what song. But I mean, it's just the basics. Just a little sleeve here for you to put the, the disc into. Um, yeah. And it says here, uh, Ontario Arts Council, and then underneath it's in French. That's the, the interesting thing about buying things in Canada. Everything's bilingual. It's like English on top, French on the bottom usually. I remember buying a bottle of, I think it was Diet Coke or Diet Pepsi, and it was like bilingual on there. I thought that was kind of cool. 
so I don't believe this was released in the U.S., um, but seeing that she's a border artist, she's on the basically on the she's out of Windsor on the border, and she thinks Windsor, Detroit. I might be wrong, but there's a real emphasis to this being an independent Canadian album, so it's probably going to be pretty hard to find. It's probably not uh, available in most of the country. It's probably uh, it probably hasn't received too many pressings. One thing I should know about I should note about this is it may not work on everybody's device. I have a Bose Wave radio, Paul Harvey approved. Paul Harvey, good day. We need to have a talk like Paul Harvey Day. There's a there's a special day for just about any cause you can think of, you know, National Dogs Day, National Brothers Day, National Teachers Day, National Mail Carriers Day, National Cake Day, National Ice Cream Day. There's a day for everything, but we don't have a national talk like Paul Harvey Day, and we need to have one. But I have, uh, but I have a Paul Harvey approved Bose Wave radio, and I tried to put the CD on in that, and it just it didn't seem to read it. I don't know if it's a formatting issue with the CD. I don't know if it's just the CD player, or maybe I was just not operating it properly. But all my other CDs work just fine in the in the Wave radio. Uh, it, it worked in my parents' house when my when my dad was listening to it, um, and it worked in my car. I traded my car in. Now I got a vehicle that doesn't even have a CD player. So, but in my previous vehicle, I tried it and it did work. But um, yeah, I took this to my parents' house because my father is a jazz enthusiast. So I wanted his take on this. I wanted him to, to give me his opinion on the album. And his opinion does not affect my grading, and it does not affect my view or overall opinion on this album, but it was interesting to hear his, his side of it. He liked it. He thinks she's good. He thinks she has potential. But he doesn't like the way some of the songs were mixed. He said the instruments are mixed a little too high up and he couldn't hear what she was singing. He couldn't really understand what she was singing a lot of the time and they kind of muddied out the vocals. And he said with good jazz, the vocals are way, way, way up on top of the mix and the instruments are turned down so that the, the attention is always fixated on the vocals. And he said in this case, they're mixed a little too high up and they kind of detract from the singing and they take the listener's attention from the vocals where it, it's supposed to be. So that that's valid. I think that's a very interesting argument. Not going to affect how I grade it. Um, but I think that that's part of what makes this kind of a crossover album. I think that instead of it being a straight 100% jazz album, it's it's kind of got some crossover appeal, so it would appeal more to a pop audience as well. I think maybe it was mixed that way so that people who are more into pop music as opposed to straightforward, all-out jazz could also appreciate it too. I might be wrong in this. Again, it could also just be because it's an independent album, and I have a feeling that they probably did not have a huge budget when they recorded it. But as far as date night music goes, or as far as relaxation music goes, this is actually pretty good. And as far as jazz goes, I recommend this. I don't recommend a lot of jazz. I don't listen to a lot of jazz. This one, I will easily listen to. I like this. I'm going to give this one a 4 out of 5. Bordering on a 4.5. Um, I'd probably have to listen to it a few more times to... to bring it up to that level, but I'm really impressed. I don't think there's a weak song on this album. I, It's not something I could listen to all the time. There's definitely a time and place for this kind of music, but for those moments when music like this is necessary or when I'm in the mood for something like this, I think this is as, as well done as, as it can get in this, uh, in this genre, a genre that to me is kind of limiting and kind of the same. So... The high praise is for something I normally don't listen to. Uh, Chrissy Cochran, Little Sway. I'm going to give this one a four out of five. If you can find it, great. 
Um, but uh, just remember, it may not work on your CD player. Uh, it may it may be a formatting issue. I don't know, but I would say if you really like if you if you want to hear it, go listen to it on YouTube because I know it's been downloaded. Somebody pretty much had, somebody uploaded the entire album onto YouTube. So go listen to it there. If you like it, go try to find a record store in Canada that sells it. Uh, maybe you could mail order it. It's um, surprisingly good for for its genre. So I'll get back to The Rock in my next video and have something that, that The Rock audience would probably prefer to hear. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, thanks for watching.